It's said that the mind is a powerful tool capable of leading us to the heights of success or into the depths of despair. But how often do we pause to consider the profound impact that our thoughts have on our lives? Imagine learning to intentionally transform every challenge into an opportunity or every setback into a learning experience. That's the journey we're taking together. We believe in the extraordinary potential of the ordinary mind and we're committed to unlocking it. And we're not just dreaming about it, we're doing it. So if you're ready to challenge the status quo of your thinking, to turn what if into what is, if so, join us on the Life Design Podcast as we transform our daily thoughts into our greatest tools for growth and achievement. Your journey to a more successful you, it starts right now. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe now so you can join us on every episode. We truly appreciate it. And be sure to engage in the comment section of your favorite platform for your chance to be invited as a guest on one of our episodes. Welcome back, my amazing friends, to the Life Design Podcast. I'm your host, Michael Borland, a.k.a. Coach Michael. And as always, today we're going to turn our mind-shifting conversation into a journey to a better me. As you know, every episode um, of, of ours on, on Wednesdays, our coaching series, is a step towards understanding and harnessing the power of a growth mindset. So we'll be exploring strategies that are backed by science, proven by success stories, and, and ones that will empower you to reshape the way you think, to redefine your goals, or uh, you know, to reinvigorate your life. Today's topic is thought, or should I say belief, you know, number three from my book, Improve Your Thoughts, Improve Your Life. This one, this, this is one of the most common thoughts that every person has. So let's look at how the average person thinks compared to those who are consistently experiencing higher levels of success, you know, throughout their lives in all the different areas. See, average thinking sounds like this. I just wish things would get better. And I can't speak for you, but I still hear this all the time. Clients, people on the street, even relatives and friends, I hear it often. And, and then after we think about it, you know, for a minute, we, we, we often revert to cliches, you know, it, it's, it's, if it's to be, it's up to me, that, that kind of a thought process, right? But what if we trained ourselves to start from the better perspective? Okay. What if we, what if we trained ourselves to where our first thought was a more successful way of thinking? As in things will definitely get better after I and my mindset get better. Okay, this really should be common sense, but let's be honest, common sense doesn't make much sense anymore, does it? The fact is you and I can help change that. People that have growth mindsets and that are forward thinkers, we can, we can help change that. Maybe I should make a stronger point, you know, for us here. Common sense is just that. It's common. And if you want common results, then stick with common sense thinking. But if you would like to have results that are beyond common, that are better than common, you need to practice better than common thoughts. You need to have better than common practices that you intentionally implement into your life on a daily basis. And that can start with our daily, you know, consistent thought processes, patterns, and beliefs. Okay. The, the, the key to consider with this specific thought or this specific belief let me let me actually do this. Let me ask this. 
what is it about us that makes us think that things around us should improve without any effort or any intentionality of our own? I mean, we expect athletes and doctors and musicians and so on and so forth. We expect them to study and to practice to get better before their results get better, which is which is why we would not want to go to someone who's read a few books about, you know, being a surgeon. We want someone who's intentionally learned, who 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 has belief patterns and, and knowledge that fits that job description. <laughs> so why wouldn't we expect to have to practice and to get better ourselves to get better results in life? And why do we look to the outside world and expect to be happy on the inside? Why should success in any area of our life be any different from the success stories of the people that we look up to or that we respect in life? Again, such as, you know, doctors or people who have put in the time, put in the effort to really, you know, learn that, that, that skill and to, and to hone it and to be able to do it on a consistent basis. So if we want to feel better inside, why would we, why would we not expect to have to work on what's going on on the inside, right? If we're not good at drawing pictures and we practice a lot, would we not expect to for our, for our outcome to look better, for our pictures, our drawings to look better. Of course we would. It'd be ridiculous to think otherwise. The end result is if you think you should wait for things outside of you to get better before you take action, you are the thing you're waiting on. So how do we shift this this disempowering way of thinking and turn it into something that will carry us forward, that will um, carry us upward in our life, so to speak. Look, the number one resource you have is you. And the most powerful part, one of the most powerful parts of you is your mind. When you learn to focus on making yourself better on the inside, the things around you have no choice but to improve with you or they fall away from you. When you invest into your mind and into mastering what you think about and you watch how quickly and how dramatically your life changes, it's literally mind-boggling. I mean, think about this. Arguably, the the number one highest, you know, high or best high achievement trainers, uh, you know, in the world is Tony Robbins. And, and I talk about him often because of that. He always speaks about the power of mindset uh, and, and uh, of achieving success, you know, how it, how it influences us in achieving success. And you don't have to just look at him. You can look, you can look at anybody online that that's a trainer to the elite. They talk about consistency. They talk about putting in effort, but they talk about mindset. I even heard, who was it? LeBron James on I think it was on a commercial, but I've heard him say it before, say this just yesterday. I heard, I heard it and he said, it's all about the mindset, all about learning and creating the right mindset, which gives you the ability to push forward with the things outside. If you don't have the right mindset, if you don't have the right thoughts and beliefs that are consistently going through your mind, it's, I'm not going to say it's impossible, but it is infinitely more difficult to consistently, you know, push forward in the areas that, that we want to move forward in life. Oh, I've said this many times. You've, you've heard the, the saying from, uh, 
from Tony Robbins where he says, you know, where, where your focus goes, energy flows. And this is in alignment with the idea of focusing on self-improvement and where doing so leads to better outcomes in life. Or maybe we'll put it another way, a different way that it's stated. Setting goals is the first step in turning the invisible into the visible, which again, echoes uh, you know, our current discussion on proactive thinking. And it emphasizes the importance of mindset, of having a mindset that's geared toward what you want, of setting clear goals and making intentional steps forward. And one of the ways to do that is to practice mastering our everyday thought process or thoughts or beliefs. There's, there's dozens upon dozens, probably hundreds or even thousands, I don't know, of uh, psychological studies, of, of you know, studies that have been done with tons of research that support the personal effort from a mindset perspective and how that leads to success. And I mean success in whatever way that is important to you. Example, the concept of a growth mindset. This was popularized by psychologist Carol Dweck, wherein she, she showed that individuals with a growth mindset who believe their abilities can be developed, okay, they tend to achieve more, way more than those with a fixed mindset. Those with a a mindset who believe their abilities are innate or unchangeable. And by abilities, we're talking physical, mental, emotional, okay, an overall mindset of believing, hey, I truly can change any aspect of, of my personal abilities. Okay, there are verified stories of tens of thousands of successful people from any walk of life from any field, you know, professionally or or what have you, who exemplify the principles of self-improvement and of mindset leading to their success, that they attribute their success to the mindset that they had, which then allowed them to push forward with all their personal physical efforts and learning of knowledge and and all of the outside world things. Some of those people, some of the most popular ones are people like Michael Jordan, Robert Kiyosaki, uh, Beethoven, even, right? Highlighting their their relentless practice for self-improvement. Yes, they talk about consistently working hard, doing things over and over and over and just sticking to it. But when you truly listen to their stories, what they refer to is what was going on inside and how that pushed them forward. We all know the story of Thomas Edison and how his persistence and his willingness, you know, to learn from failure after failure. And this promotes or it pinpoints the principle of a growth mindset of consistent effort and learning from the mistakes that were made, but continuing to move forward until, I mean, his, his achievements were phenomenal. <laughs> they changed all of our lives. And it doesn't have to be that, that grandiose, right? It could be something simple. But just like you know, just like our muscles grow stronger with exercise. Our minds and abilities expand with continual use, with continual challenge. And part of those challenges are to 
practice and intentionally think from the most empowering perspective. I mean, muscles are a physical analogy, but they illustrate how a belief in, in consistently working on ourselves and our mindset and our beliefs, how that leads to personal growth and to more success in any area of life, relationships, health, fitness, finances, everything. I invite you to pause for a moment, okay? Take a minute and just stop and reflect on a time when your specific way of thinking, your spe specific thoughts or beliefs influenced, or maybe you believe created because of those thoughts, those beliefs, created a positive outcome in your life. How did that experience shape your understanding of the relationship between your mindset, your thought process, processes, and the success that you achieved or experienced, or the, maybe you never even thought of it as, as success before, but just something that you enjoyed. But you know that that happened, that, that you got the outcome you did because of your way of thinking. Maybe you saw a friend or a relative or someone else experience a much worse result and you knew it was because the way they thought. Or maybe you, maybe they went through an experience with you and they didn't like it and you're thinking, what are you talking about? That was, a, that was awesome. And you knew it was just because they thought differently than you did. And you knew that if they just opened up a little bit in the way they, that they perceive things or the way they think about things, that they truly would have had a good experience or a good outcome in that. I mean, this is a, this is a real life, you know, practical tip, so to speak, on how our thought processes and how the strategies that we use to, to um, intentionally think in certain ways, how they can take anyone who commits to improving their way of thinking can actually improve their results. Just literally with that one thing just by shifting or changing the way we think. think. Consider this. Successful entrepreneurs in how they start each day with certain morning routines, with a clear path to what they want that day to look like. Businesses. Businesses have an intention for this is how the day is going to go. And we're going to take steps to make, to make sure that we get the outcome we want by the end of the day. If you were to do that personally, if you were to take and say, write down you know, maybe three goals that you want to achieve each day. And you focus on the actions that lead to your personal and professional growth or, or movement towards that goal. Every step, every thought, if you get a thought that, that directs your focus or your attention in a different way and toward an outcome that you don't want, that you intentionally stopped and said, no, I can make this happen if I improve the way I think. If I think different about it. it, it it's a simple habit that you can create that will dramatically increase both your productivity as well as your result. Again, this is what we do in business. But far too many people fail to, to realize that, that you can and you probably should look at your life or run your personal lives similar to how a business is ran. 
if we want to create the lives and the lifestyles, you know, and, and experience the, if you want to call them your dreams, your desires, businesses do it all the time because they're intentional in the way the business thinks in the steps the business takes. They don't take steps or, or they don't promote thoughts, beliefs, and actions within a business that lead them in a direction other than where they want that business to go in the future. If we learn to do that in our own lives, we can gain success in our lives just like a business would gain, would become a successful business. There's actually research out there um, in the positive psychology area of positive psychology that suggests that practicing gratitude significantly impacts our mindset and our success. I talk about this all the time. By regularly acknowledging things that we're thankful for, we cultivate a positive outlook. That outlook empowers us to take action towards those goals. That's just one example. And quite frankly, if you think these tips are too simplified, you know, that they're so simple, they're so generic, they won't work. Remember what I always try to promote. And this is not my way of thinking. This is this is hundreds of, of successful mentors that I've learned from over 34 years. It's just my way of expressing it. Success is made simple. We intentionally make things more difficult than they need to be. We're taught to do so for a number of reasons. One of which is simply the fact of wanting, wanting some recognition. This is, this is super common. Who's going who's gonna to cheer me on? Who's going to congratulate me? If they think what I accomplished was super simple, we think we don't deserve it because our accomplishment was simple for us to do. So we make it seem more difficult. We believe it needs to be more difficult. Success is made simple. You want to word it differently? Make success simple for yourself. Quit overthinking it. Quit overcomplicating it. Tell me this. When you think about the number one factor in taking your life from where it is now to that next level or in, in succeeding in any, any area of life, any, anything that is important to you, do you think of it from the average perspective. I asked this last week. Do you think of it from a perspective of, I just wish things would get better? Or do you pause and do you acknowledge that when I practice, when I learn to master what's going on in here, in my mind, that is when things around me will get better. Or are you just focused on everything outside of yourself? I'm going to go learn a new skill. I'm going to go get a new job. I'm going to go work on all of these things and nothing changes. Because you can see it in society. Politicians, musicians, high-end, super successful business people, the majority of them are miserable. Let me put it this way. The majority of them are more miserable than the average person. You just don't get to see that part. You can, you can see it if you pay attention. Multiple divorces, you know, potential bankruptcies, even though they're making millions, sometimes billions. More success puts you in a position of more challenge. If you've got more going on in life, you're going to have more challenge. Unless you're working on what's going on inside first. Because then you build that success 
in a way that reduces the stress, the anxiety. I'm not necessarily saying it reduces challenges because you're intentionally going out and challenging yourself to grow more. But if you start from the inside, you prepare yourself for what you're going to experience on the outside. You, you prepare rather than learn the lesson the hard way. And I get it. I said it a moment ago, learning the lesson the hard way gets you some kudos and some, you know, some pats on the back. But if you want to avoid that, yes, start on the inside. You start with intentionally learning and creating a more successful mindset. So as I've shared in the last couple of episodes, this is actually uh, topic number three, belief number three from my book, Improve Your Thoughts, Improve Your Life, which has 70 of these thought patterns comparing an average way of thinking to the way that the more successful people, the people who experience consistent success in life in, in every area, again, relationships, health, finances, careers, all of it, comparing the average way of thinking to what I will just say their way of thinking. Which one are you? Okay, I will be comparing all 70. So today was number th number three. So we've got you know 67 more of these very common thoughts and beliefs that we're going to be comparing each week on the podcast. Right now it's on the Wednesday's episode. So we'll be looking at that. We'll be looking at hundreds of other, you know, life-changing topics of other challenges that we can, simple challenges that we can do to improve our mindset, our way of thinking, our beliefs and our belief patterns and processes. So join us every week. Be sure to follow, to subscribe, to like, to share, whatever it is on your platform, to engage with us. You can listen in on Spotify, YouTube, Apple, iHeart. We're on all the platforms. Okay, links to the book I will put in the uh, in the description here. Actually, you can just go to to Amazon. You can find it on there. But please be sure to engage with us on any of our platforms. And if you'd like to join me as a guest, I say this often. In we're in February now, beginning of February. By the end of February, March, I will be inviting guests onto the podcast. So you can reach out to us on the platform, or if you're a professional, um, an expert in a field, be it mental health or, or certain aspects of, of, you know, mindset of growth, of meditation, of, of anything in that growth mindset realm, um, you can reach out to us on the website, which is mylifedesign.com, all one word. And as you know, design is D E Z is the way that we, we spell it on the podcast and on the website. So I look forward to engaging with you and meeting you soon until then, as always live awesome and enjoy your journey.